All right. Someone asked me <coughs> oh, to talk about my experiences with certain drugs I've used. So, okay, fine. Um, test. Always gone on fine. Never had acne off it in the sense that people do. I have thinned a bit, and generally hair in my family is quite good, so I do think I've had some male fat and baldness um, from it. Um, but otherwise, from water retention, uh, no real big issues. Um, never had gyno, never had symptoms of gyno. Uh, and to be fair, in my early uses, I ran quite high doses of test, got a gram, over a gram, gram and a half with no estrogen management whatsoever. Um, Decker, again, never had. Decker's probably my favourite drug. Uh, nev, I've had high prolactin, but I've never had any issues from it. Um, I suppose really with the high estrogen, yes, there was a predisposition to get body fat and definitely water retention. Um, with the Decker, well, my memory is shit. So I do think the deck has played a role in that. Tren, ran Tren very high, 1.5 grams. No night sweats, no real major cardiovascular impact because my cardiovascular ability was pretty shit anyway. No real issues, not particularly Tren cough, but what I did get was the disassociation, uh, a coldness, uh, a, a matter of fact attitude towards what normally would have been things I would have been concerned about emotionally. Um, <clears throat> D-ball, yeah again, fine, no real issues. T-ball, like T-ball, got good strength of T-ball. Oxys, always liked Oxys, but have had some BP issues and some RBC issues. Headaches would be the big one. Um, I took a version of Oxy years ago called Synastron. I believe it was supposed to be Dutch, but fuck knows. Um, now these were the days when drugs were all pharma. And this stuff came with a skull and crossbones marked as a poison on the side of it. So fuck knows. Massive headaches, but the strength was unreal. But so was the aggression. Oh, what a nasty shit was that. Uh, EQ. Ah. RBC issues with EQ. Didn't find it particularly anything worth talking about. I personally don't like EQ. I think its anabolic ability is pretty shit. Its only benefit is increased RBC. So if you're going to take a drug and you want to boost your RBC, I'd take Oxy because you get good strength of Oxy as well. So I've never really rated it. Loads of people argue with me and say, well, they do and this and that. And that's fine. If it works for you, it works for you. It just never really did fuck all for me. Um, never used Primo. Never may not get hold of it. Um, trying to think. What else is there? Oh, Mast. Yeah, all right. Uh, again, nothing dramatic. Uh, slightly drier, slightly leaner. Um, the biggest problem with mass is probably actually getting genuine thing um, these days anyway. But the vast majority of my, my usage was, was test and DECA based. Um, Anavar, fine. I used Anavar pre-workout quite a bit, got, got very good pumps. In fact, actually got pumps that, that were disabilitating for the workout. Uh, I got so pumped that my range of motion got shit and I couldn't actually end up not being able to fulfill the workout quite often. Now growth. Low dose, really good. Really enjoyed it, worked really well. Didn't really realise how much of an impact it was having at the time until I put, put it out and I looked back retrospectively. Uh, but I felt really good with it and uh, water retention was, was low. I was running four to six IU every other day of Ansonum. Um Libido was through the fucking roof. Unbelievably slow, stronger than I've ever had on any other drug. 
I just generally felt good. High dose, felt like shit. Massive water retention. Got carpal tunnel type syndrome stuff, but not as much as a lot of people complain about, but I did get it. Uh, and I thought the effects were absolutely shit. Combined with insulin, I found uh, massive pumps, fucking unbelievable pumps. I mean, some of the fullness and pumps I used to get in the gym at that point, I looked like I'd put two stone on from the point I walked in. And if I got the water and glycogen in the right place, I looked tremendous, but I didn't always get it in the right place. Um, found insulin a bit difficult to manage long term. I tried pre-post, that wasn't so bad. Did go hypo under the leg press one day though. Uh, not fully, just had a bit of a rocky moment. And then I, I tried with every meal throughout the day. And I found the problem there was that you've got to build up in the system that was a little bit tricky to manage. I sort of snuck up and bit you on the ass a bit. But what I found with all this was that it made no real impact on, on my growth. Uh, I'd look huge, absolutely massive, full of a house when I was using it. And then when I stopped using it, it just seemed to all just disappear. Uh, so I've never been a fan since. Um, and I got better gains on test and Decker and Oxy than anything else. And just focused on the basics and made sure training was on point and made sure dining was on point and sorry, diet was on point and, and that's what I grew the most with. So side effects really, I haven't done so bad. <clears throat> Obviously, pretty much all of you are aware of my kidney issues, um, combination of lifestyle, drugs, size, and having a problem that's been there for a very long time. You've got to remember, 10 years ago, I was severely and morbidly obese, and I've been that way for a very long time. I've not been under 20 stone, 280 pound. In nearly 30 years? No, not quite. Uh, 25 years. 20 years, 25, no, 26 years. 25 years, 26 years. So I've not been under 280 pounds in 26 years. So that amount of mass continually being carried around has definitely played a role in fucking my kidneys. I don't deny the drugs have definitely played a role in fucking my kidneys. And that really is the longest, biggest side effect apart from. And this is one of the biggest changes probably that really frustrates me is my skin. UC2 triggered something central nervous system related uh that causes me now to get adult rosacea i get it when i'm tired i get it when i run down i get it when i'm stressed um it's easily manageable if i can be asked getting the antibiotics but i don't like the situation and it's embarrassing and, and that's something that's been left with me post drug use so that's something that my uses has physically changed in the way my body works. Otherwise, it's a bad joints are pretty good to be fair, considering everything I've done to them. I've got a fair amount of muscle tears, but, but actual joint injuries, joint problems, not really got anyone. Knees are good, hips are good. I've got two bulging discs in my back. Um, one's pressing on nerves. Um, and I've got damage to C6 and C7 at the top of my neck, but that's probably more to do with the crushing incident than anything else. Um, but yeah, you know, elbows are good. I suffer from bouts of tendonitis with my biceps. My biceps tend to get tight because they're quite large. It can be problematic, but not at any grief from them. And the strange thing is I get them from pressing movements. I get them from bench press, shoulder press. I don't get them from pulling movements. Um, but yeah, so daft as it sounds, the vast majority of drugs. I oh, am Tren. Don't know why I fucking bothered. Test suspension. Again, didn't really feel anything in the gym. Just got um, large site swellings wherever I put it. Uh, PGF two A. 
Uh, obviously, initially I got the involuntary bowel movement, so I had to go sit in the toilet when I did it, and then you got the lung aspiration, which is quite unnerving. Um, after about 10 days, it felt like I had flu. But otherwise, not so sure. Um, I do think it potentially played a part. I do think it was potentially doing something, but to me, it was just too difficult to live with. I managed to get to a point where I could control the urge to shit myself, but the result of that was I then caused myself to have constipation. So uh, it seemed to be one or the other with the stuff. Winstrel, okay, bit of joint pain, not bad strength off Winstrel. Um, Amp 5, weird one Amp 5, difficult to get right and does require an absolute shitload of carbs. I played around with it just to see what it was like, but I was never really lean enough to take proper advantage of it. Uh, for those that don't know, Amp 5 is a veterinary drug. Uh, using in racehorses and taken pre-stage with a shitload of carbs makes you full of vows and incredibly vascular to the point where I've seen road maps on people's heads. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to think now. I don't think there's really anything else. It covers most of them, doesn't it? Um, and by far, without doubt, the best ones for me have always been test Equinoxy. Simple, old school, but it works. Um, like I said, lasting health ring wise, um, they're the main ones. I mean, the main problem I've got is the rosacea and the uh, kidneys. I mean, the pretty major ones, to be fair. But uh, heart, liver, all pretty good. The values are all normal within range, but the function's all good. I've got slight enlargement of the left ventricle, which is not uncommon, but the cardiac, basically what I was told by the cardiac people was that my heart function was very good. And that it was actually quite impressive considering the size I was. Uh, and cholesterol's never been a big issue. But you see, contrary to popular belief, my diet's always been quite clean. It wasn't when I was a fat folk. But when I was pushing hard, I, I ate very clean. I just ate a lot. Um, so, and I always ran low fat, very low fat, which is probably something that's added to the cholesterol. And I always ran estrogen quite high, which again has probably helped with the cholesterol as well. Um, other than that, I'm all right. Um, arteries are, are not excellent, but they're not bad. Uh, and what would be expected of someone of my age and of normal health, apparently. So that's it. So they're the drugs I've run. Um, they're the experiences I've had. Um, retrospectively, I don't like Trent. Um, I don't think his gains are anywhere near justified, and I don't think people gain anywhere near as much as they like to claim. Um, and I think the sides are just too much, even though I didn't actually suffer that much with them, just from what other people have reported. Um, and Decker, I really, really liked. Still do. Um, if, if I could use again, or if I was willing to use again, it would probably... Oh, coffee stain. Sorry about that. Trusty bastard. If, if I could use again, um, I'd probably go test Decker. Um, if BP was good, I'd probably go Oxys as well. Uh, I use a lot of that with my clients and they get excellent results, but obviously I'm very health aware now when it comes to using, so I make sure all these areas are monitored. Um, and that's it. Not really much else to say on that subject. So I hope that answered the people who were wondering what I've used and how I felt on the various things. What I generally used to find with my cycles was that I'd, go to, I'd, I'd be flying absolutely flying, diet be bang on, appetite would be good, training would be good, and I'd go so far, and then I'd get a couple of niggles, and then appetite would start to go to shit a little bit, uh, and then everything would just start to break down a little bit, and I always knew then that that was the point I needed to come off, I needed to stop, either drop the dose or just come off, stop, whatever, because the toxicity levels had built up to the point where it was now negative, 
Um, and I think that's where a lot of people go wrong. Yeah, you can plan a cycle and you can plan it for so many weeks, but you also need to be adaptive and you need to listen to your body and you need to tell, listen to what it's telling you. And sometimes it will tell you, you know what, I've had enough, I need a break. And there becomes a point where you've got the gear trying to make you go that way, but you've got the toxins trying to push you back down that way. And they just become a point when they'll start to cancel each other out and it may even become negative. Because if you can't train hard and you can't lift properly, then how are you going to grow? Uh, and it just they can become a point where you're just not that healthy. Uh, and um, the training side starts to suffer and the appetite starts to suffer. You know, at that point, you're just you're wasting your time, you're putting drugs in your system, you're toxifying your system, and you're not really going to get anything out of it. You can try and overpower it, which is what a lot of people will do. They'll try and put more drugs in, and to a degree, it'll work for a short period of time. But the feeling like shit will just come back. And it's amazing how much we don't notice the feeling like shit until we stop the drugs. A lot of people you get that do cycle on PCT will often report that once they're on PCT, they feel really good and they feel they're sleeping better, they feel healthier, and generally just feel really good. Uh, and that's at that point you realise how much the drugs were affecting the body and how toxic they were becoming, starting to become on the body. So listen, listen to what your body says uh, and uh, adapt accordingly. You need to text something because someone says you do. You know, it doesn't work for you. It doesn't work for you. The sides are too much to handle. The amount of people I see, oh, I've got to take train, I'm taking train. I don't know, why? You know, if, if you're going to suffer bad with it, then don't use it. Simple as that. There are other drugs that are just as effective. Tranny's not the be-all and fucking end-all of the world, although you might think it is when you listen to certain people. Same with growth and insulin. Everyone seems to... I've, I've had a guy this week talking to me. Um, considering coming on to be coached by me, but he's, he, he's obsessed almost with using growth and insulin. I've told him it doesn't need to be there. It's not a problem. You don't have to use it. But he wants to. And I've actually turned around and said, well, you come with me, you won't be. It's as simple as that. Um, and we seem to, to be very obsessed at the moment that we must use certain drugs. Uh, and to be honest, the healthier you are, the more you're going to grow. So if you're starting to feel like shit, then you need to back off, take some time off, drop down to a TRT, whatever your thing is, but give it a break. Because you'll grow better when you feel better. Okay, anyway, start the ramble. So I'm going to go. Uh, take care, guys, and I'll speak.